So before we get into anything, it's important to understand what an operating system actually is. And you can consider that it's something like a mediator between your computer's physical parts, and that's the hardware, and the programs that you use, which are applications. And it's sort of like very special software that helps them communicate and work together. The operating system essentially takes care of the computer's internal stuff, like its memory, processor, and storage. And the way that it does this primarily is by your direction, your interaction with it. The operating system gives you a way to interact with your computer, and it's usually through a graphical interface, or a GUI, or even a command line, where a command line is very similar to imagine yourself typing in words into a document, but the computer then understands those words and does things. So maybe another way to think about it is that the operating system can be sort of like a traffic cop at a very busy intersection. And this, this traffic cop, well, they manage the flow of the vehicles on the road. And the operating system very similarly manages the flow of information between your hardware and software instead of cars going to different directions. It keeps everything organized so your programs get the resources they need and can send and receive data effectively to where they're supposed to go. So how can we maybe summarize what the key functions of an operating system are? Well, maybe in four categories we can think about it like that. We have hardware management, and that involves the coordination and allocation of hardware resources within a computer system. The operating system ensures that hardware components such as the central processing unit or CPU, memory, storage devices, and input-output devices are used efficiently and effectively. And it does this by regulating the sharing of resources among various programs and processes to prevent conflicts and ensure smooth operation. So a second key function would be the user interface. And this is a huge function actually. How the user interface is designed to work with you and your intentions is going to make or break your ability to effectively produce output. And we see this very typical in today's workspaces where everything is graphical user interface based or, or GUIs as we just talked about in the previous slide. And when we say that, what we really mean is icons, menus, windows and buttons, things you can click and drag around. While previously things were really designed on the command line interface or CLI. If you're having trouble thinking about this concept, try and consider the fact that the interface really is just bridging the gap between you the user and your intentions and the underlying operations of the operating system. A third key function would be process management. And this involves overseeing the execution and coordination of multiple and hundreds and hundreds of processes within the system, really. The operating system schedules processes to run at certain times with the CPU, and it ensures a fair and efficient allocation of processing time. It also handles multitasking allowing multiple programs to run. We've all been there. We've all had 20 to 30 Chrome tabs open, right? So that's the process management component of an operating system. And how effective it is at doing that, it's going to make your life easier. And then lastly is file management. And that encompasses the organization storage retrieval and manipulation, really, of files and directories and storage devices. And the operating system handles tasks such as creating, opening, closing, reading, and writing all of those files on the storage device itself. It manages this in something of like a hierarchy type of construct, where there are folders, directories, and files, and this ensures that data is stored logically and efficiently for fast operation, fast sorting, fast finding. That's why the structure is the way that it is instead of just one large array of space where everything lives at once. And what I mean by that is, for some of you listening, if you're used to putting things on your desktop where you have folders and files living there, well, imagine everything lived on your desktop and then someone asked you where a file was. It might be kind of hard to find, but if you can break these things apart into multiple folders and subfolders, you can perform searches by keying maybe just the first character of what the folder or file might begin with, and then quickly navigate further from there amongst other various ways like size and type. So file management is actually incredibly important. So what are some examples of operating systems? Well, maybe it's more important first to consider why we even have multiple operating systems, right? Like, why don't we just have one that everyone uses? That would probably be easier, right? But then the question I can put back to you is, well, why don't we just all have one car? Why isn't there just one brand of car that everyone can drive? That probably too would be easier. 
but then you would be quite limited on the ability of what that single function is. And that's why we have so many different types of operating systems. You can imagine maybe that operating systems are actually like different brands of cars. They have distinct looks and features, but they all serve a common purpose of getting you to where you want to go. At the end of the day, while a car might look and feel nicer and that might provide a nicer experience for driving the car, well, it's still just going to get you from point A to point B. And then you start to get into more specifics, like how fast can it get you there? Um, how much power does it require to get you there? And that's sort of where we start getting these more specific breakdowns of why we also have different flavors of operating systems themselves. And it's not always about efficiency either, right? There's sort of like the rule of cool, if you will, like what do you find enjoyable or nice or appealing? That's also part of the operating system experience too. It's also based on your preferences. And oddly enough, if you are finding an operating system enjoyable, it can make you more productive, which also is something about efficiency, although it can't be measured by raw performance of the hardware. The user's performance and efficiency is also directly related by just how enjoyable they find the operating system experience. So let's talk about some of them. And one of them is Windows. I'm sure you've heard of this at this point. And this is really what you find just about everywhere in enterprise environments and small, medium sized businesses. It's quite ubiquitous and we'll talk about why soon. It's sort of like the familiar car that many people use for everyday tasks if we're going with this car analogy. And it's made by Microsoft and comes in different versions like Windows 10 and 11. And then we have the Mac OS and this is the operating system that runs on Apple based hardware like MacBooks and iMacs. It's more of like the stylish and elegant car that's designed to work seamlessly between the Apple's hardware and ecosystem. And thus it has a very distinctive look and feel. And then we have Linux. And you may have heard of Linux at this point or might be poking around and it's sort of gotten that reputation of being like the hobbyist type of operating system or those with more technical proficiency, but it's not always the case. So you can think of Linux sort of like a larger family of cars each with their own special features. And it's unique really because it's open source. And what open source really means is that anyone can see and modify its code. So that's a little bit different than Windows and Mac. And different versions of Linux have what are called distributions or distros like Ubuntu and Fedora. And they all offer various flavors for different specific needs. And then of course there's Android, which we hear about a lot these days too, is that this is sort of like an operating system for your pocket gadgets, such as smartphones and tablets. It's versatile, flexible, just like how you can maybe customize your car with different accessories. And Android is developed by Google and powers a pretty wide range of mobile devices, actually. So how did we get here? How are you watching this video right now and listening to it? Um, well, we've come a long way, really. Early operating systems, well, in the past, computers work like assembly lines, really quite uh, basic. They would process tasks one after another without user intervention. And these systems were limited in their interaction with users and focused really primarily on completing tasks efficiently. Just really, really simple and straight to the point. Input, output. And then something happened. We came up with the command line interface. And that started to really drastically change things. That allowed us as users to communicate and instruct the computer by typing specific commands like, hello, who am I? Just like how we would say to one another with our language, we could now start to instruct the computer with a language that was closer to how we natively speak. But there was a bit of a problem. It was quite efficient, but really it was more for experienced users and scientists and researchers and technical users, which, all required reading a manual or instructions. And I think we all know today when we order furniture to put together and it comes with instructions, not everyone wants to read it, right? So something happened at that point where the graphical user interface or the GUI was born. And this introduced visual elements. And GUIs really revolutionized computing. They introduced visual elements such as icons, windows, and menus, and this eliminated the need for reading these manuals and instructions where you could just point and click and something would happen. So this allowed users to interact with computers in a much more natural and intuitive way, thus ultimately reducing the need to memorize commands and reading instructions before you could get up to speed and be operational. 
And then we finally came to today's modern operating systems. So today's operating systems have evolved really to support a wide range of functionalities. They manage multiple tasks concurrently. So that means really at the same time, they enable communication over networks and incorporate robust security measures to protect user data and privacy. These operating systems ultimately provide a platform for running diverse applications and handling complex computing needs. Okay, so what actually makes up a modern operating system today? Well, we have a series of components and they're all generally the same across different operating systems. And it starts off with the kernel. The kernel is the heart of the operating system. It's really just a fundamental piece of software and it manages functions. It's sort of like the bridge between hardware and software making it all work. It handles requests back and forth and makes sure that everything's working seamlessly and smoothly. And then of course we have the user interface and file system, which we've talked about, but just to sort of refresh again, it's really just providing that interaction between you and the computer itself. And then we have the file system, which is managing all the files and folders and data on storage devices. And then we have device drivers, and these are like little software components that facilitate communication between the operating system and the hardware devices themselves. Essentially, they sort of like translate high level commands from the operating system into commands that the specific hardware device can understand and execute. It's the reason why if you were to play a game and you were doing things inside the game running around, the operating system takes your input as the user playing the game and then translates it to messages that the hardware can understand to process the requests to then send back signals that can be sent back to your monitor for you to visually see what's actually happening in real time. So they're quite important. And then we have these utilities and utilities are more specialized software tools that come bundled in with every type of operating system really. And they start off with the basics such as just copying and editing files and text to maintaining the system itself where you can maybe look inside of the processes that are running and seeing how they're performing, looking for errors, troubleshooting, scanning for malware, and even going so far as completely changing the behavior of how the CPU can process at certain speeds. And then we have processes which you are using right now, one of which is your web browser that is playing this video for you to listen to the content. And each process has its own memory space and resources, which allow multiple programs to operate simultaneously as a result. The operating system is managing all these processes, allocating resources, scheduling their execution, and ensuring that they don't interfere with one another. And this is how we get multitasking in today's world where we can open up so many different things at once. And then we move on to memory management. And memory management is the process of really efficiently allocating and tracking memory resources in a computer system. It ensures that programs have the memory they need to run without overloading the system or conflicting with other processes. And the operating system does this by overseeing memory allocation, moving data between RAM, so the physical RAM on your motherboard, also known as random access memory, and the storage devices. So the operating system is just basically playing this big scaling act where it's moving things between RAM and the storage device back and forth, balancing it, ensuring that all the processes have the space that they can work from without interfering with one another. And then finally, user management. So one of the most important operating system components is just the ability to manage user accounts and permissions. And that allows you to control who can access the system and what they can do. That's an incredibly important part that makes everything work today without overlapping and seeing what's inside of each other's folders and accessing things that people shouldn't access. So to summarize all of the importance of operating systems, well, it's the foundation of computing, really. Operating systems serve as this foundational software that enables computers and devices to operate. They manage hardware resources, provide a platform for software applications to run, and facilitate the interaction between you, the user, and the underlying technology. And then software compatibility and hardware utilization, which is really just, as I was mentioning, this large balancing act to ensure that all the various applications and software run smoothly and effectively and efficiently. And then of course, the balancing act between the resources that you physically have to run the operating system, your RAM, your CPU, your storage, the operating system makes sure that that's all utilized properly and as needed and effectively as a result. And then security and privacy, 
which consists of privacy controls and user permission settings to help ensure that personal data remains confidential and only accessible to authorized individuals or applications. And then lastly, the user experience. The operating system strives to really enhance the user experience by providing these user-friendly interfaces and intuitive interactions. And whether that's through graphical interfaces or command line interactions, the goal is really to just create an environment where users can navigate, access applications, and perform tasks efficiently. And a well-designed user experience contributes to increased productivity and user satisfaction in our digital world as it is today.